we're here at the Rouge Electric Vehicle Center on the campus of the Ford Dearborn truck plant, where Ford will be producing the all new 2022 F-150 Lightning electric pickup truck. Almost a year ago to this date, Ford announced this facility, and now prototypes are starting to roll off the assembly line. When fully operational, this facility will be able to produce 80,000 trucks a year. That's over 200 trucks a day. Let's take a look around this all new facility to see how Ford has made this possible. Touring the massive new plant, we got to walk and talk with key plant personnel who will oversee production of the first mass-produced electric full-size pickup truck. Moreover, we're at the Rouge Electric Vehicle Center on a very special day. Ford just announced an additional investment of $250 million to the company's electric vehicle operations in the Detroit area. That money comes with the additional benefit of 450 more direct jobs. It's big enough news that Michigan's governor, Gretchen Whitmer, was in the house to celebrate. We're standing here at a historic place, right? The Rouge plant. Now the Rouge Electric Vehicle Center, a 500,000 square foot high-tech home for thousands of F-150 Lightnings. The Rouge Electric Vehicle Center is the home of Ford's electrified future and an incubator for jobs in Southeast Michigan. As demand increases for new EVs from Ford, like the Lightning, the company invests more and more into plant expansion and ramping up battery production. From the moment the body comes in from the body shop, everything starts to come together. Bumpers and fascias that are specially designed for the truck's front end and front trunk are brought into the facility. All of the truck stuff is combined with all of the electric stuff in this one building and on this one mobile assembly line. There are even robots that assist with flipping the frame and installing the reasonably heavy battery pack. Those robots are the largest in the world, doing the heavy lifting with technical precision. Um, they're very flexible. The two big robots pick the frame up and flip it over. We start the process upside down. It's easier to put in things like the, the drive units and suspension while the vehicle's upside down. And then those robots pick it up, flip it over and hold it in the air while another robot grabs the, the battery off of a different AGV, installs it to the chassis AGV, and then we put the frame down on top of it before we secure it. So those are, those are unique in that they're the largest FANUC makes, and they're doing something that would be really difficult to do manually with, with, with human labor. Ford is using new technology to build the Lightning, which is new to F-150 assembly, as well as new to the company as a whole. We have what's called a NAB, what we call a NAB, a Next Generation ACE Box, and that's another acronym, Assembly Information Station. So these screens behind you, these bigger screens, they control all the torque tools, they make sure all the nuts and bolts are shot, they make sure that we scan the parts, put all the right parts on the truck. And then we also have an iPad in every station, what we're calling a digital workstation tablet that facilitates communication to our operator. We can tell them if, if we found anything that's not right that they did, and they can also tell us if they're having a problem so we can come help them. When you think of an electric vehicle assembly plant, you think of the advanced technology and robots, but as you just heard, Ford has developed new tools specifically for the human workforce. We also have the automated guided vehicles that carry the vehicle through the plant. We're not using skillets or two-strand conveyors, and it's very flexible. You've got a, it's very easy to walk across the floor. We can reconfigure the plant to the increased demand if we wanted to do so, as you saw today. So that's, that's what really makes this place different. Those automated platforms move around the plant much like a conveyor system, but they adapt to not only the station they're approaching, but the people working at that station. People, when they start work, they badge in, they take their badge, and we know who's on the station. So if they're short or they're tall, we can make the vehicle go up and down to suit their ergonomic needs, and we can also make it go up and down to suit the ergonomics of the process. If they're working low on the vehicle, if they're working high on the vehicle, it goes up, you know, three or four feet, so it makes a huge difference. Why all the focus on people? experience. Some of those folks assembling the all-new F-150 Lightning have been working for Ford for decades. They know how to build trucks with the quality the customer demands. So when you look at the experience of our workers, um, they've worked in manufacturing for 20 plus years, many of them. And, and sure, they have to be trained on the electric vehicle process because it's new. And as I understand it, they're getting um, hours and hours and weeks and weeks of training um, on these vehicles, but nobody knows Ford and the F-150 product better than the workers who have built internal combustion engines here for years. So when you talk about experience, you talk about quality, because all these things relay into one, 
um, it's the worker and that's where it comes from. So um, when you talk about uh, the experience of the worker, um, I mean, you can't do any better than the folks that have been right here at this Rouge facility for 20 plus years building this vehicle. The workers also use the technology to communicate back to Ford. It's easy for the employees to share their expertise on the line to help improve the process. And more importantly, we're having a conversation going to the operator, but the operator has an opportunity to give us feedback and say, this is what I need. And then once you have that two-way communication, you solve problems a lot faster, you become more efficient, and more importantly, you're serving that operator to build the best vehicle we can build and get it to our customer. All final assembly work is completed in the Rouge Electric Vehicle Center. That includes final quality assurance checks. In addition to checking the vehicle with bright lights for imperfections, there's a load calibrating station that makes sure the built-in truck scales are calibrated properly. That tech is used to help the driver determine if the truck is too heavily loaded or if a trailer is too heavy. Plus, it helps the onboard computer calculate a more accurate range estimate. Finally, the trucks roll up to a DC fast charger where they're plugged in and then sent on their way. But there's still a few more quality checks before they get loaded onto a truck for delivery. We, we charge them, they go out the door, and there's a couple of processes that we'll share with the main plant. They go over a rough road to make sure there are no squeaking rattles, and then there is a longer water test that we use to make sure that um, we don't have any water leaks. But other than that, they're pretty much done. A couple final QC checks and they're going straight to the customer. It's easy for a company to show you some fancy tech and talk about how they're improving processes, but there's still a big leap from talking to doing. When will the truck go into final production and head to customers? So we expect that to be sometime next spring. If Corey's answer sounds a little vague, it's because there's still a way to go between building prototypes and building final trucks, especially in our current supply chain climate affected by the pandemic. That being said, everything appears to be on track for the company's original estimate of deliveries starting in mid-2022. The Rouge Electric Vehicle Center is one of the most advanced facilities we've ever been in. In addition to producing an F-150 that is just as capable as a gas-powered truck, it is also producing the most powerful F-150 to date. Our own Stefan Ogbach recently took a ride in the new Lightning out on the West Coast. Let's take a peek and see what that was like. All right, so we're getting a ride into 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning. Stefan Arbrecht with EV Pulse here, and this is John, our driver. So we can do this. Oh my God! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> this has no right being this nimble. Holy shit. Jeez Louise. Holy cow. <laughs> this is Greg, and we are taking a ride in the Ford F-150 Lightning Pro. Whoa! <laughs> oh my gosh. How is this thing... Oh my god. <laughs> oh, and that low center of gravity is just... And we're back where we started. That was insane. And keep in mind, this is supposedly a, the commercial version. So put that into perspective. Thanks so much. Thank you for coming out. Now we're here in front of the main entrance of the historic Dearborn truck plant. I'd like to apologize a little bit for the noise, but we wanted to get you outside of the production facility and out on the street for a chance to not only see the area, but get a chance to actually talk to Stefan about his wild ride that he just went on. Stefan, thanks for taking the time to join us here. Um, can you elaborate a little bit more about your ride experience and, and what you enjoyed about it? Obviously that F-150 Lightning gave you instant torque. So the moment the driver punched it, you literally got pinned into your seat. And mind you, this is a 6,500 pound car. It has no business going and accelerating this quick, but it was pretty thrilling. And the best part is, it, it doesn't feel like a big heavy truck. It just moves like it's light on its feet. So when you talk about it, I mean, three and a half, you know, almost three and a half tons is a, is a heck of a lot of weight. One of the cool things they showed us earlier in the plant was these new advanced robots, um, one of the largest in the world that actually picks up and flips the body over and then they install the battery pack on top of it. And because those components are just so heavy, it requires these massive robots. So. Um, 
from from the very beginning, it, they very clearly have said, "Look, we we know this is going to be a heavier product. How do we how do we manufacture that? How do we make that work like the rest of the trucks that we have?" Um, what I mean, like, obviously, you were in a dual motor version, I believe. Yes, it was a dual motor um, version. So instant torque. Um, I know that you've driven uh, several Teslas in the past. Uh, yes. How would you compare sort of that? How would you sort of compare that experience? I know you weren't driving, but. So the difference here is that it's not as sudden. Like the power delivery is, is really quick. You still get that instant torture. You're still getting pushed back into your seat and literally pinned. But it's not so brutal like in a Tesla Model S uh, perform performance or a Model 3 performance. Those right. cars will literally pin you so hard that you're ah, you're doing this. Porsche Taycan does the same thing in Turbo S, right. guys. This one is almost to that point. But what makes it really crazy is that this thing is is a truck. It's not a sedan. Right. Or it's not a it's not a sports car. <laughs> right. It's 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 interesting when you mention that because um, if you watch our our first ride of the the Mach E GT, I think one of the takeaways there too was. It's almost like Ford's doing a little bit of torque management from a launch, whether it's to preserve tires, whether it's to preserve motor, whether electric motor, whether it's trying to preserve something like that to where it's not giving you the full torque until you're rolling. Where I agree with you, when the, the Model 3 performance that I've driven, like you put your foot down and it's immediate. So I'm kind of curious if they're doing it for, you know, longevity sake of the motor, that I don't know. Um, but it is interesting that this, that's now consistent across two of Ford's newer electric vehicle products. I'm not yeah. saying that that's bad. It's it's fast, when, especially once you're moving. Mm -hmm. And you do make a good point. Again, it's a pickup truck that's doing zero to sixty in you know four and a half seconds or four seconds or whatever it ends up. And mind being you, Chad, I also think four and a half seconds is, is four and a half seconds. I think that's a conservative number. You think it's it conservative? It feels faster. Yeah, I mean, there's. Yeah, I mean, electric torque, I guess, can kind of do that, right? Like, it just plants you and goes. And if you have the traction of all-wheel drive, I suppose that it could be pretty quick. Yeah. Um, it's definitely faster than a Raptor. And, I mean, that's kind of their, that's kind of their top tier, their top tier performance truck that's, that they currently make, which, um, interestingly, the, the Lightning is the most powerful Ford F-150 that, that they've built um, anywhere, especially here here out of Dearborn. Um, what are you most looking forward to when you actually get a chance to get behind the wheel? So other than probably autocrossing it because it looks like a very capable car thanks to that low center of gravity, capable sure. truck. So in addition to doing that, I want to, I actually want to see if, if I can power a whole house with it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, sure. No, uh, that's something they didn't really mention today and I don't know if the people watching necessarily know if they haven't seen the stories, but um, when you buy the dual motor version of the truck, it includes uh, Ford's 48, um, 48 amp uh, wall charger. And that wall charger, when hooked up properly, will actually, can actually use the truck to power the house. So it's not just one way, it's not house powering the truck, but it can go the reverse way. So um, our producer, Ben, who's behind the camera right now that none of you can see, but it's the only reason why this video works, has had, has had several power outages this year already. So it would be very convenient if he had a lightning in his garage to, to be able to continue to make quality content for us if, uh, if uh, he had that, that truck there. Um, so that's interesting. And it's, it's, it's also interesting too that you think, you know, you're looking forward to actually taking it like on a track or going to an autocross or something, something where you don't normally see a pickup truck. Like, you know, when I go drive a pickup truck, like I want to go jump sand dunes up in, you know, up at Silver Lake or go out to Glamis or wherever. I don't, I don't think of going to a racetrack and embarrassing Corvettes, but maybe you can, and that'll be kind of <laughs> that'd be kind of fun to watch. Yeah, for and, sure. And also, what does this say about the future of uh, sport trucks like the F one fifty Raptor? Yeah, so. for sure. Like, I mean, this, these aren't even. I, I dropped a hint to one of the guys. I'm like, well, you know, I can't wait for a performance version of this, and I didn't exactly get a. Oh no, we're never going to do that. So, I'm sure that it's coming. I don't know how soon. Um, as, as you're well aware, nobody ever talks about future product, um, yeah. especially when all the PR, especially when all the PR folks are around. But we have to believe that there will be an electric Raptor at some point. Mm -hmm. And watching a 6,500 pound pickup truck fly through the air will be just bonkers. So. Yeah, and I bet you that thing will also have over, over a thousand pound feet of torque because the standard truck already has 775 
even right. in standard battery mode, standard battery size, doesn't really matter which battery you get. You sure. get that same torque. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they put a third motor in it. I mean, I don't know when Cybertruck's going to ship. I don't know if it'll ship. But uh, it seems like they're going, I mean, they're not going to be the first the first uh, full-size pickup truck to market, for sure. I mean, Ford's going to have that, that taken care of. And Rivian launches here before the end of the year. So um, they're going to be a little late to the party when if slash when they show up. But if Ford does performance the way they have been doing, um, they've got to, they've, they for sure have a strong competitor to what anything Elon and company would come oh, out with. Oh, for sure. That's well, thanks, Stefan. I appreciate, I appreciate the time on this. Of course. Production begins early next year, and when lightning strikes dealerships, it'll carry a starting price of around $40,000. Ford has already secured 150,000 reservations for the new truck. For more information on the F-150 Lightning, as well as other EVs on the market, be sure to check out evpulse.com. <laughs>